here we are day one KTM 1090 adventure launch just heading out of the uh, KTM facility in Temecula apparently we've got about a six hour ride about 120 miles uh, should be a good day Okay, so we've left the uh, KTM offices. We're heading out into the hills behind Temecula here. A little bit dusty today. First thing I noticed about this bike is how smooth the motor is compared to the 1190 Adventure R. Really smooth, uh, tons of power everywhere. Although it's 125 horsepower compared to 150 of, of the 1190, there's still tons of power everywhere and the torque is still about the same as the 1190. So the uh, KTM engineers have worked a little bit of magic there. So the controls on this bike are basically the same as the 1190 Adventure R. The digital menu is the same. Although they updated all that stuff for the 1290 Super Adventure R, they've kept it the same on this bike. in sport mode and I have the traction control off and I have the ABS set to off-road mode so it lets you lock up the rear wheel a bit and also stops the front wheel from locking up which is really helpful on this really loose stuff you don't want the front wheel to knife under you in a in an off camber sandy turn section now that's going between two of the dirt sections you can really tell that the uh, 1090 adventure is really comfortable on the road just at this turn off here just getting ready to go up over a mountain apparently this road's a bit more hairy than the stuff we were on so uh, let's see what it's like so there's these little water water bars that you could drop off and that's a good test of the suspension I know on my 1190 that I had that stuff with sock suspension would definitely bottom out but uh, yeah, this is where the spike's gonna really shine on this more tight technical stuff. So the bike's really maneuverable when you're standing up. Uh, I always end up finding myself sitting down in some of these tight turns, but that's my fault. Okay, this feels like you should be riding a 500 EXC, not a 1090 adventure bike through this stuff. But that's why this bike's cool. Pretty much do every, anything. Whoa, whoa, got a bit sideways through that rut. There's another one. Not really sure where I'm going. Here we go. Okay, that's rocky right here. If you have the bike in off-road mode and you put traction control on and ABS in the on position in off-road, he said it's much better. So you should be able to like just ride it really smooth on the throttle and you should be able to just come out of turns and the traction control will kick in a little bit but it'll still let the back end slide just enough to point the bike like that.
you can see how they've developed the suspension on this bike by riding stuff like this guys like Chris and, and Quinn Cody doing this stuff really gives the feedback to the engineers in Austria that this is what the US market wants is more of this stuff and less road stuff I'm Quinn Cody with KTM R&D. Uh, we're out here at the Cheney Ranch. Uh, we just finished up with about 120 miles of uh, off-road adventure riding um, with a whole group of journalists. Um, we're, uh, we're here for the uh, 1090 Adventure R press launch. Um, we'll be camping out here at Cheney Ranch tonight, um, giving the guys kind of a, a real adventure type experience, um, sleeping in tents and uh, you know, just enjoying, enjoying the nature. So uh, I started with uh, KTM last year um, in July. Um, I came on in the street R&D department. The idea being they wanted to get a little bit of more of an American uh, involvement in the development of their on-road and adventure dual sport platforms. So um, they wanted to start doing some testing in the US and make some specific uh, settings for the United States because our riding here is a lot different than they than what they do with the bikes in, in Europe. So I came on to kind of head up the, uh, the on-road side of the R&D. Uh, we've had motocross R&D here in the US for the last 10, 15 years and, and they've come a long way with that. And um, so now the street adventure side is, is coming on and we're starting to do quite a bit of testing here in the States. So this year, uh, I think the biggest change in the suspension uh, on the 1090 is, is the PDS rear shock. Um, PDS is something that's been used in KTM's EXC line for many years. Um, and this is the first time that we've actually put it on a, a, a big adventure street bike. Um, the, what PDS means is it's a pro progressive dampening system. So uh, basically makes the suspension more progressive. So as you get closer to the bottom of the stroke, uh, the suspension firms up and it gives it a little bit more bottoming resistance and prevents that hard bottoming that you feel sometimes on these big heavy bikes. Uh, up front, we have the WP uh, 48 millimeter uh, split open cartridge fork. Um, the fork itself hasn't changed much, but we went to a, a much stiffer spring this year to really bring the bike into balance a lot more and then uh, quite a bit stiffer valving so in comparison to last year the uh, the bike feels much more balanced the front end doesn't doesn't bottom and uh, it also it rides a lot a lot lighter because everything is higher up in the stroke and and it just doesn't feel like you're riding a 500 pound motorcycle it's it feels like you're riding something much lighter so uh, the 1090 is actually a, a whole new engine. Um, it, it isn't a, just a down-sleeved 1190 like some people might think. It's, it's actually a completely different engine. It has different engine cases, uh, different crankshaft, heavier flywheel mass, um, cylinder heads, um, has different balancing shafts in the cylinder heads to make the, to make the bike uh, ride a lot, more, lot smoother. Um, they've done a lot of work to make the bike Euro 4 compliant. Um, the Euro 4 is the emissions that, that uh, is coming in, in Europe for 2017. Um, and it's difficult to meet those emission standards and still have a powerful bike. So KTM has had to do a lot of work in optimizing the uh, combustion chamber and the, the fuel delivery system to, to get the bike to really uh, perform well. And, um, it shows the bike is really smooth, uh, it feels, feels light, and, um, but it, it still makes tons of power. I mean, when you put it in, in sport mode, the thing, the thing rips. So in comparison to the, to the 1190, it's a lot more sporty, a lot more of an off-road bike, um, better suspension, a lot lighter handling. Um, in comparison to the 990, this bike would, you'd find it to be a lot smoother, a lot more powerful. Um, much better going down the road and, and equally as good off-road. So the, the 1290R is, um, it's, for one thing, it's a beast. I mean, the engine is incredible. It has 160 horsepower and it just flat out rips when you put it in, in sport mode. Um, the feeling you get from the bike is the engine is very smooth, but it also gives you a little bit heavier feel when you ride it um, in comparison to this bike, um, just because of the, uh, 
you know, the mass of the engine, the crankshaft, flywheel, stuff like that. Um, so, so this bike rides a lot lighter, but the 1290 is packed full of features. It, you know, it has the uh, TFT dash, the, the keyless ignition, um, you know, all the motor slip control, MTC, um, quick shift. So it comes with a lot more electronics. So for a guy who wants to ride, you know, on road and wants the full, the fully loaded package, uh, the, the 1290 is a great bike. Um, this bike is more of a, for a guy who wants to go off road a lot more, um, do a lot more adventures and doesn't really want to deal with, with all the extra electronics and doesn't want to pay for them. Um, you know, this bike, uh, retails for, I believe it's 14,698. So it's, um, you know, it's right in the price point and it, you know, it's really down there close to what they're selling Africa twin for. And, and that was kind of our target. Only you, you know, you get a lot better suspension, a lot more horsepower, um, comes with steel bars, or I mean, sorry, aluminum handlebars, uh, adjustable foot pegs. So, you know, you really get all the KTM quality with this bike for close to the same price as, as a Japanese bike. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, you know, when I first started, uh, we were pretty far off in the, in the development of the suspension and, and I'm really happy and pleased that that they've listened to what we have to say um, here in North America because our riding is quite a bit different than what they see in Europe. Um, so, you know, we've had a lot of the guys from R&D come over here and do rides similar to what we did today. And, and it really kind of is an eye opener for them. And it's like, wow, you really can do stuff like that on these bikes. So I'm, I'm very pleased with, with the way the relationship is built with, with uh, Austria and, and what they've done to improve this bike.